What do you want me to do, boss? I, I want you to tell him we need to get in there. Get in there. No, I, th I think it would be better if you stopped in. Okay. They saw your face. Up. There's more pressure with that. Yeah, especially when I'm like this. Yeah. Is it done yet? <laughs> well, we've been stuck. Well, today's the day. Dropping the RV off at the diesel shop. They're falling apart in here. Are they falling apart? They're falling it completely Sorry. apart. I've been talking. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Stop talking. Well, today's the day, dropping the RV off at the diesel shop because we've got a problem. Well, so they said they'll get to it as fast as they can. And that's about all they could tell me. Was he talking to a man? Or? Yeah, I was talking to a man. Sounds but like a man thing to say. This man I was talking to had been on vacation for the past week and he's like, I've just got to talk to the service manager and figure out when we can get you in. But I'm, I think we can get you in today. Anyways. So as you guys have been following us along, you know our RV's been overheating, and that's not normal. Not normal at all. I think, I think at first I was in denial, telling myself, this is normal. This is okay. We're going up a hill. I'm towing a Jeep. It's overheating. It's normal. It's not normal. It's not, and the whole reason, well, one of the big reasons we switched our whole life around again was so that we could go up in the mountains with no stress, no worries, no overheating, no brake troubles all the things we dealt with with the fifth wheel yeah is why we got this because we knew we were headed to the mountains so yeah we're ready to we were made for traveling and so we feel better we do better when we're on the move but we got to get this figured out uh, i think today is actually the two week mark since we left flaming gorge with my sister so we have been stuck in southern wyoming for about two weeks now during that time we did enjoy our time oh, at yeah. a koa We've we boondocked great memories up near the wild horses area refuge area that was one of my favorite things ever ever it was so fun they just need me in there because i'm <laughs> persistent and pushy yeah <laughs> so let me tell you what's going on though okay, okay you tell them all right i've had the check engine lights on ever since we bought the rv i'm having them look at that and also on the overheating issue it has pro progressively significantly gotten worse and it got significantly worse after we left that long gravel road down at Flaming Gorge. And I believe it's because all that dust and everything got sucked up into my radiator and has clogged it up. The reason I believe that is because just the other day, I uh, had the RV on and I went back here and I was feeling around the radiator because I was thinking, I can't feel any air pushing through this thing at all. But then as I moved my hand around the radiator, I could feel air blowing through in certain spots. So what I originally thought may have been my fan clutch the fan is operating because I can feel air coming through, but it's only coming through in certain spots. And so it makes me think that my radiator is significantly clogged, possibly because of the dust from that dirt road. So lesson learned, possibly, we'll see what the mechanics have to say, but if that's the case, we may not be going down any really dusty gravel roads anymore. Um, Cause this has taken up a lot of our time and it's gonna take up a lot of money. As you've seen, I showed you, $133 an hour just for labor. And my guess is, is this thing's probably gonna be here for a couple days. And the guy, the service manager inside said that once it's in the shop, we cannot go back and sleep in it overnight. We're gonna have to, or they can't pull it out for us to sleep in. We're gonna have to get a motel room. So you add then motel room per night, plus our labor, plus whatever it's gonna cost to fix it. But this is just part of it. I just realized I left my generator on, so I'm gonna have to go shut that off. The thing about buying a diesel coach is yes, it's gonna be expensive when you have to have service done. Uh, there's no doubt about it. All right, got the generator shut off. But yeah, it's expensive when you have diesels worked on. 
So it's something to consider when you're looking at gas versus diesel is yes, you're gonna be spending more money on repairs on a diesel than what you will at gas. But I believe the trade-off is better when it comes to towing power, fuel economy, all those different things, and the quality of the coach that you're gonna be getting on a gas versus diesel. Now the bad part about having a diesel, and especially cat, something I didn't know about cats is that they do not make cat uh, engines for RVs and trucks anymore. So finding service mechanics for cat is harder now because of that reason. Now I could probably, if we had a Cummins engine, I could have probably already got this thing serviced and worked on because I have found a lot of Cummins authorized mechanics all over Southern Wyoming. However, there have been only two cat mechanics that I have found. One was in Rock Springs, this one is in Rollins, Wyoming. But I had to get over here because they were the only ones who could get us in the quickest. We, we've been here in, in Rollins now for five days and they still haven't gotten us in. They got me on the books today, but they're still like, we're really busy and hopefully we'll get you in as soon as possible, but you may have to spend the night in the hotel. At this moment, am I regretting buying this motorhome? Absolutely not. I believe it's a perfect one for us. I'm glad I have a diesel. I'm glad I have a cat. They do have a good reputation. Oh, I guess, I guess I'm driving. Say hi. They're falling apart in here. Are they falling apart? They're falling it completely Sorry. apart. I've been talking. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> She's ready to go. All right. So I believe this is the culprit is the radiator. We'll see. Now they have to get access into the radiator. There's two sides, obviously, to a radiator. The other side is going to be in through the kids. I'm hurrying. The other side is going to be through the kids' bedroom. If you looked up Chasen and Grady's bed, that's how they get access into the engine from the top side and the radiator. All right, I'm done. So we're going to have a fun day today. We're going to hang out and I don't know what we're going to do, but hopefully, hopefully we can get on the road today. Hopefully yeah. it's a quick fix. We'll see. Again, again? Ready, set, go. It's been about four hours since we dropped off the RV. Still nothing has happened as we just drove past it after getting our bellies Wait, full. From... are you not gonna go in there and say something about it? Well, I need to, I'm, I may just call them. I don't know, but after four hours, nothing's happened yet. So I am gonna call them or stop back by. What do you want me to do, boss? I, I want you to tell them we need to get in there. Where get in there. Go? No, I, th I think it would be better if you stopped in. Okay. They saw your face, that there's more pressure with that. Yeah. Especially when I'm like this. Yeah. Is it done yet? Uh, no, he'll go in. Just, just ask nicely. He'll be real sweet about it and be like, oh, "Okay, cool boys, just checking in. Have a good day." And I go in and be like, "Hey, we got four kids, and they haven't lost their mind, but they're going to, and we just need to kind of figure out what we're doing tonight. So, can you please let me know?" Yeah. That's what. Okay. That's why he's gonna go in. So I'm sending you in. <laughs> Take one for the team. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn around, go back, let them see this beautiful face of mine. Actually, I think if you went in, Lane, they'd, you know, be like, "Yes, ma'am, we'll do it. We'll, we'll, we'll get right away on that." <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Stay tuned. Park right there so they can see all of us, and 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 I'll just all look sad in here. Hello. I'm just checking on RV I dropped off this morning, seeing if you guys have had a chance to check it out yet. Which one? 
Uh, last name is Loftus, L O F T I S. So, is it going to be done? So. <laughs> and then, oh, look, you see, you still got your sweet face going. Yeah, you know, I'm a sweet guy. <laughs> I can't pressure nobody. And? He said that the he said they have a bay that's opening soon and that it's the next one coming in. Okay, so but, that mean like ten minutes or three hours? Or? I don't know. He just said he just said it'd be in really okay. shortly. Okay. And okay. that he would let us know after a while if it was going to be staying overnight or if it was something that they could fix quickly. Okay. So we'll just wait and see. Well, it's in the shop. That's great news. Haven't heard from them yet about what the verdict is as to why we are overheating so today has just been really been a day of waiting around trying to fill up time right now lane and the kids are at mcdonald's uh really all we are using is their wi-fi and their uh, they have a playhouse area so we are taking advantage of that i got a video uploaded so it's going to be a waiting day we'll see what happens but my hope is that we can get on the road soon like today maybe tomorrow at the latest only time will tell and the hits just keep on coming so i pull up to mcdonald's go to take the key out and the key won't come out at all i've tried several different times restarted it uh took it out of park into neutral back into park still trying to take it out and it will not come out i do not know what's going on I will say that when we bought this Jeep, I always thought the ignition was weird because it was hard to click the key back into the off position. Like you kind of had to force it. I always felt like I, like it would break the key at some point, but it never did. And I, I wasn't too worried about it, but now I'm thinking, well, there was a deeper problem because it won't budge. So I got it off, I'm in park. And so I can go there but then it's supposed to turn further back and pull out and it will not pull out at all i go forward start turn it off push even pushing the brake it it will not come out and it sounds funnier too it just sounds like something's not right at all <laughs> oh boy so i've got a key that won't come out of my jeep all right so there is a jeep dealer here i guess i'm gonna go get the kids load them up and we're gonna go up here to the jeep dealer and see if they can fix this really quickly i guess now's the time i mean anything else that can break i guess right now is the time to have it break oh uh, let me show you one more thing uh right there uh, right there so the other day we just noticed this chip and it has cracked all the way over there went all the way up and now it's coming all the way over down to my side so we've also got to get a windshield replaced might wait on that though until we get back to missouri i'm not sure we'll see okay so key came out i drove around to where lane was sitting inside mcdonald's because i thought if i'm gonna leave the key in this I want to be able to see the Jeep because on the other side where I originally was, I couldn't see the Jeep. So I drove around, stopped, put it in park, turned the key, and it came out. I am going to put it back in and try it again and see if it comes out because I what I don't want to have happen is us get a long ways away and not then the key not be able to come out. And so since there is a Jeep dealer here in this town right now, and since we are waiting, I thought right now would be a perfect time to get this fixed if they can. So I'm going to see if it will come out again when I try to do this. And it did. It's coming right out now. Turn it on. All the way into the on position. It's coming out. I don't know. But it definitely is sticking. So I guess we'll just leave it for now. So hey, that's a blessing. It's one last thing I have to get fixed. <laughs> okay, good to know. Thank you. No, it's not here yet. Okay. But it's coming today. All right. Well, it's not here yet. It's on the UPS truck. Ooh, ooh, we're 
we're gonna take a bath. We're gonna take a bath. We're gonna take Lane, us a stinking, stinking, stinking bath. Lane's excited about the bath. I'm excited because we finally got word from the RV mechanic that our RV is gonna be finished tomorrow. So the verdict is, as I suspected, it has to do with the radiator. It was clogged and the radiator cap was bad. So they're gonna replace the cap, uh, clean out the radiator, they're gonna steam clean it. They are going to tighten a belt that is loose on the water pump and they're gonna replace my air filter and they're gonna have all that done tomorrow. And so we're gonna take a bath. We are we're excited about that. All six. Yeah. Oh yeah, and the RV's good news too, it's good. <laughs> yeah, cause that, all those things are are like Doable. minor it's not like anything's broke or anything needs to be seriously praise replaced. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you guys for the prayers. Yep. Now we're leaving McDonald's. We're going to get some clothes at the RV, go pick up Lane's package, and we're going to go stay in a motel for the night. And I'm kind of excited about the motel. Yeah. 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 Why don't we get two? Grady, two. can you babysit? Yeah. Two okay. motel rooms? Yeah. That'll work. Grady will babysit the kids. You're eight, so okay. that's practically a teenager. Totally fine. Yeah. I'm sure you guys agree. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys understand. <laughs> we live in an RV. We need a date. <laughs> Just got the phone call. The RV is ready. So I'm headed down there now. They want me to do a test run and pull a steep grade to make sure that everything is working as it's supposed to be and that I'm not overheating. Hey. Well, it's not fixed. Oh my goodness, are you serious? Yep. 